What's going on guys? Crown Garage back again. And sorry the videos have been so spaced out. Been extremely busy. Um so with that being said, we're gonna look into some future stuff for the talon. Um so I'm gonna show you some new parts that I got. No installs in this one. Just gonna show you what I'm what I'm looking at and uh, what I'm gonna be getting. So uh, yeah, like I said, been super super swamped with all sorts of different stuff. Um, the car is running good. Um, from that initial video that I uh, posted, where I was making about 21 pounds max, got with the tuner, had him bump it up to about 25, 26. Um, it's loving it a lot more, turbo spooling a lot quicker. Um, so that's cool. Um, now things that are uh, to come in the future. I've yet to order the parts yet, um, but today I probably will be. Today is July 30th, um, 2024, obviously. So I'm going to do a 6 a.m. return uh, for the fuel line. Uh, it's got a factory one, a uh, steel one still. Going to relocate the fuel pressure regulator, get all that fixed, and then we'll move into the reason that I'm gonna redo that fuel line, which is for something else that I bought, which you guys probably find to be pretty cool, um, which I also did. And the deal that I got on it is crazy, so. You guys will um, hopefully kind of see where it all starts to come together. So I'm going to start showing you everything. I'll show you that part last, but we're going to get into the more important stuff first. Not my typical work attire. My red shirt or my gray shirt or my safety green shirt. Can you believe it? Okay, so... There is a YouTube short on my channel from a little over a year ago where I did a full front suspension revamp. Now, this upcoming fall winter area, full rear suspension revamp. So, let's start getting into what we got here. So, we got a Dorman 522 648 trailing arm. Um, this is all off of Rock Auto, um, so, got the trailing arms, um, for all-wheel drive, two of those, we got some Delphi Technologies, sway bar, um, bushings, so, there's that. We got upper control arms. If I can get them out of there. Upper control arms. Um, so, there's, we got driver and passenger. Um, we got uh, tow arms. So we got trailing arms, tow arms, upper control arms, um, sway bar end links. Um, and then, now, this is might seem a little bit goofy, but I got two different brands of wheel bearing. Um, they were both on a closeout sale. It's a wheel bearing. So it is what it is, but we got that one and we got this one. So whole rear suspension set up. Everything's going to get replaced. I'm going to delete the dust shields um, because they are completely, pretty much almost completely rotted off. Uh, and yeah, it, it's just pointless to even keep them. But 
some exciting stuff um, because that will obviously clean up the car a ton um, because it looked horrible underneath, especially in the rear. But the biggest thing with all of this is going to be I am going to drop the rear subframe. Um, why? Because I do not want to have issues with the eccentric bolts for, you know, the alignment hardware, whatever you want to call it, um, being stuck, seized, because I know it's going to be a thing. This stuff's probably never been replaced. Um, you pretty much clearly tell it's never been replaced. Everything looks terrible. It looks like it's sat in the ocean, and it's an Ohio car. I mean, of course, it's rusty, but, you know, it's just going to be good because then pull the diff out. We can do um, subframe bushings, diff bushings, um, have the subframe sandblasted, painted, powder coated, whatever I end up doing. Um, just completely revamp everything and it's going to be great. And then eventually when the engine gets pulled out, we'll do the same thing with the front subframe. Um, so, and then the transfer case as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's the real reason that I want to pull the subframe out. It's going to be really nice. Um, so, with that being said, that is, this is not a project that's going to be on the channel for a while. Because, for one, I'm going to need help, obviously, dropping the subframe. And for two... Um, it's not something that I want to do when it's still nice out and I can drive the car. The fuel line thing I'm talking about, probably a, a couple day, maybe a week endeavor, you know, in total. Um, because, you know, obviously I work, I work, I work, I work, I work. And then after work, some days I just don't want to do anything. That's one of the main reasons that I haven't really been posting super consistently like I was for a while just getting a little bit burnout you know obviously doing a lot of side work actual work and uh then coming home and doing this and it's it's hard to even want to film it because it's just so much so again that being said um We'll move on to the other thing, which is the thing I got a good deal on. All that suspension stuff, wheel bearings included, um, if you consider that suspension, it was just a hair over 300 bucks uh, on Rock Auto. If you look for things that come in package deals and like wholesaler closeouts and stuff, you can get pretty good deals on stuff. Like I said, that's why I went with those wheel bearings. Cause like those are, you know, like drive works. I know for sure is a def, like a definite brand that I've heard of and, you know, people have commonly used. It was like 20 bucks for a wheel bearing. And yeah, I know it doesn't come with the hub, but none of these do. These, these rear ones for these cars, they don't. You have to separate that and put it uh, together on your own. And then the other one ended up being like, 15 14 15 bucks so like how can you even beat that plus the Dorman trailing arms were a deal together for i think like 60 60 or something and then the, the toe arms same thing control arms are the only thing that weren't but they were still i think only 40 35 40 bucks piece which for a whole control arm it's pretty crazy so the only other things i need to get i'm gonna get the stm camber bolt kit which is the bolts that mount those, which is the bolts that mount the control arms, and then the eccentric bolts I also need to get, which STM sells those as well. Other than that, everything should be reusable. Um, so, yeah, um, on to the more important thing, which goes with the fuel line that I'm gonna be doing probably here. And, the next week or so so struggling for content right now this is an innovate um 
ethanol content, fuel temp gauge. So, we'll start here. So here's your gauge, right? Obviously. So, for one, these gauges are awesome because you can use a computer or a laptop to change the settings here. So you can make this much green, this much yellow, and this much red for different temperatures um, and whatnot. So that is that is super cool. And included with it is a tuning cable. This literally just plugs in and there you go. Um, so comes with white gauge face, silver bezel, which honestly probably I'm gonna do because it would match. Now, it also comes with this, which is a um, pigtail for a GM quick connect style uh, ethanol content sensor. So, it will usually come with all of that, you know, all this basic stuff. Not this, this is separate, which I will explain. It doesn't come with these, which this is what I'm talking about. This is a continental ethanol content sensor. This has adapter fittings for GM Quick Connects to, I think this is 6AN. And so these sensors plus these fittings, this is probably an extra, you know, 100 plus dollars stacked on top of a normally you can find it from like 150 to 180 bucks on the internet i got all this shipped for 120 bucks brand new in the box never used on facebook i was really you know dilly dallying around i'm like i really don't need it but then i'm like you know what why not why wouldn't i buy this for that price with the sensor, with everything. It's just almost stupid not to. So I'm super stoked on this, but that brings me to the point that I'm trying to make about the return line. Now, I've seen plenty of things on installing these gauges. Most people say to install on the return side because I honestly, I honestly can't even remember the specific reason. But they say return, eh, install it on the return side. Obviously, my return line has a stock return line. And my regulator is in a stupid spot down there. So, that being said, why not upgrade? I'm on E85. I should have a bigger return line. The feed line's already upgraded, as you guys know, to six. So I'm going to match that. So I'm going to, I personally like push lock stuff. Not this stupid braided metal stuff. I just don't like it. So I'm gonna change this line out that feeds into the, um, or that comes out of the, uh, fuel rail over here. God, I cannot speak. And then I'm going to do redo the return line, which means deleting the factory line, obviously, um, and running a new 6AN line, which that also means um, taking the sending unit out and doing bulkhead fittings in it, which I really want to do. So I'm also going to take the time to do that. Um, so pull that whole setup out, drill those out, redo everything, make everything all nice. Um, and, uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm really having a lot of trouble trying to tell you guys what I'm trying to do here. It's basically relocate that regulator, redo that line right there, do a whole new push lock setup with push lock and fittings and push lock hose. So this, it'll be a really nice setup. Get the ethanol content sensor in line somewhere, 
make it look real nice and yeah i'm super stoked about it so um definitely gonna figure out a new spot for the fuel pressure regulator and then get that stuff ordered and uh yeah i'm super excited about that so it's really all for this video um so yeah i am really tired sorry for all of the stammering whatever that word is i don't know um just trying to you know let you guys know what i'm doing to this thing i also have a new blow off valve it's a uh one i got used it's a turbo smart uh i don't even remember what it's called i'll throw a picture up of it um but yeah it's a turbo smart one but i would have to get a new um flange welded right now and that's just not gonna happen that's all gonna be over winter stuff the suspension the blow off valve um i, I am going to redo the the feed line too and push lock but i'm gonna do the return first leave the feed how it is because i, I don't feel like doing it all at once because then it definitely is going to be down for a while so but since it's already a 6 a.m feed um I can do the bulkhead at the uh, sending unit because it already has the adapter that adapts the AM line um, on it. So it it's already the AM line back there at the back of the car at the fuel tank. So um, no big deal there. But yeah, um, I'm super stoked to start upgrading more stuff. And while I'm in there, I'm going to do a fuel pump wire mod to do the bigger fuel pump wire. Um, always a good idea to do get your pump more power. Um, so I'll do that while I'm in there as well. Uh, definitely not a bad thing to do. And then also while I'm in there, I'm probably going to do a like a little bulkhead for wires to go to get battery power from because I don't want all these wires on the battery in the back of the car with wires running everywhere looking terrible it just makes no sense to me one wire to a, a bulkhead for more wires to go it just makes so much more sense to me looks way cleaner i'm gonna hide it just i just don't want any of that crap anymore nothing no garbage crappy looking stuff just i'm just not having it which brings it to another point for overwinter. I need to fix all of the bad wiring that the previous owner did. But I'm rambling on and on. So thank you guys for watching. Ground rock. <laughs>